you. I know there's still some folks um, who are coming in, signing in, but I, I want to go ahead and get started. Um, most folks who know me know I like to start on time and end on time, so it's kind of my big bugaboo. But I do want people to hear the presentation, so I'll do my introduction. Hopefully that will give people time to, to wander in. Um, my name is Debbie Ann Peterman. I am the Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer here at Women and Children's, and then I also have a dual role overseeing nursing education and professional practice for the system. I've been here now seven months as of tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> um, I'll be really glad to be able to say a year, because when I'm around all of you guys who say 25 years, 34 years, I just feel really little and puny. But I'm very happy to be here, and I'm so happy that you guys um, have decided to join us this morning. Um, the presentation that you're going to see this morning is uh, the results of several months of work by our Site Practice Council. And I have to say I'm a little bit of a proud rooster this morning because when you see staff nurses uh, take on a challenge and do the work and do the research and bring evidence to their work, it's very, very exciting. And one of the things that um, when I decided to come home uh, to Buffalo was I, I felt the challenge of knowing that we were going to be building a new hospital here, knowing that we wanted to do things with excellence, and that we wanted to bring evidence to our practice. And nothing gets me more charged up than to hear you know, any of those three things. So I want you to know that it is truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here, to be in Buffalo, to be with my family again, um, both my family uh, that I was born into, but also my Buffalonian community. And it's very exciting to be here. And then to see uh, the work that's being done here is just incredible and, and gets me excited. I mean, I literally wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning going, oh, okay, what can we work on next? Um, because it is an exciting time. So I wanted to give you just a little uh, intro before I turn it over to Lauren, and that is that uh, when I came in the fall, we had um, UPCs, our unit practice councils, that were doing some work at their local level, and then were coming together uh, as the Central Nurse Partnership Practice Council. I don't know. I don't get those initials right, and I don't get that name right. But it doesn't matter, because they changed their name. <laughs> they got a new charter, and they changed their name, and they're the Site Practice Council. And they, in their charter, decided that they wanted to be multidisciplinary. So now we have pharmacists, we have um, folks from respiratory, we hope to get folks from all of our ancillary departments involved. Um, because we have a lot of work to do here at Children's. Building a new hospital is not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> and when we look at how we provide care to our patients and thinking about what that foundational work needs to be, we have a lot of things to think through because everything that we're going to do when we move into that new hospital will be different. Even from the way you come to work and where you park your car to when you leave at night and how you sign out, everything will be different because it will be a new geography, a new territory. And we have a lot to, to put together. So as we came together as a group, one of the things I asked them was, you know, what, what's our model? You know, what, what do we build our foundation on? And we really didn't have a model. We could talk about it. We could talk about patient family-centered care. But we hadn't really found a theorist to support that work. We hadn't really put it in a picture format that we could show our patients and families or even show one another. And so I, I give the Site Practice Council a lot of credit for saying, well, let's do it. You know, let's figure this out. And I, I will let Lauren give you the history about what they did and how they got there. But I would like to take a second, for those of you who are sitting on the Site Practice Council, to just stand up so folks can see you. And I want to give you a hand right now because you've done some great work. Thank you. So this presentation is still in draft format. We wanted to present the model so that we could get feedback. And I'm really excited to see colleagues here from Buffalo General and from Suburban, as well as from here at Children's, um, to give us feedback. Because if there's things that you see in the, in the uh, pictorial depiction of this model that you want to see change, please let us know today. We actually have a microphone, so if you'll save your questions to the end, because Julie is taping this so that we'll be able to put this on Kaleidoscope, because obviously we couldn't get all, you know, uh, 2,000 of our staff members here at one time. And we are going to be doing communication rounds over the next couple of weeks, so we'll be taking the model around to, to show folks. 
Um, the model that you will see is, is uh, my artwork on PowerPoint, so please don't criticize that. I am not a graphic artist. Um, just kind of love me where I'm at. And um, just know that we will turn it over to Creative Services so they can do their magic and make it look really pretty. Um, we are going to be doing this presentation to the Family Advisory Council um, in May. And again, you know, our goal is to have this posted um, during Nurses Week. And so we will just continue to show it to folks and get feedback and, and then get it produced as soon as we can. I want to turn it over to Lauren. If you'll save your questions to the end so that we can hand you the mic so we can get the questions on tape, that would be great. Uh, Lauren Hammond is uh, a staff nurse in our PEDS ICU. She's been here several years. I'll let her tell you. She can use AIDIT to tell you how long she's been here. Um, but she has uh, just taken on the challenge of co-chairing the Site Practice Council. She co-chairs her, her local uh, UPC, and she co-chairs this group uh, with Mary Ellen Creighton and myself um, as we move forward in this work. So, Lauren, I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. As Debbie, I mentioned, I'm Lauren Hammond. I currently work in the PICU. And I've been there for about two and a half years, and before that I worked in the ER in PICU flow pool. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about this patient care model that the Site Practice Council created. Um, this is going to be like our roadmap for the day. We're going to do a little background on the SPC, go over Gene Watson's theory, our patient care model, go over some commonly asked questions, and then we'll open it up for discussion. So the Site Practice Council this year, as Debian mentioned, we created a charter and we developed a purpose and a scope of work. And our purpose is to provide a forum for the local UPCs to share strategies and improve quality of care, patient satisfaction, staff satisfaction throughout the hospital and Collide Health. The scope of our work is to provide guidance, structure, and tools to the UPC, act as a liaison between bedside care and nursing leadership, create, implement, and communicate, evaluate approved plans and initiatives. And some of these approved plans our hourly rounding, the throughput initiative, and doing um, bedside reporting up on the floors. Um, the Site Practice Council started in 2009 by a staff iron initiative. Um, one of the staff nurses in the ER now did an exchange program to Cincinnati Children's Hospital and saw that their UPCs were very functional there, so she brought it to Children's. Membership in any of the UPCs in the Site Practice Council is voluntary. And this year in the charter, we decided to ask for a two-year commitment. Um, on the hospital-wide practice council, we have one to two staff members from every unit that has a UPC. And as mentioned earlier, it is now multidisciplinary with people from respiratory, pharmacy, infection control. And we do meet monthly. Some of the things that we accomplished last year and this year are the hospital-wide serial drive. It's national among different children's hospitals. We've improved the patient transfers from the ER to the floor. That was a um, staff initiative from the pediatric nurses and the ER nurses. We developed our charter, development of a patient care model, which you'll see in a few minutes, and we now have hospital-wide UPC involvement on most of our inpatient and some of the outpatient clinics. Um, to go a little bit into Jean Watson's theory, um, she has a theory on transpersonal caring, and although she's a nursing theorist, it can really be applied to anyone in the healthcare model or healthcare team. It emphasizes the humanistic aspects of nursing in combination with scientific knowledge. It's designed to bring purpose and focus to nursing or anyone in the healthcare team as a distinct health profession, and it goes over caring um, the definition in nursing versus medicine. The purpose of this theory is really to give caregivers a different kind of role and help us establish a caring relationship with patients, to treat patients as their whole being, incorporating their mind, body, and spirit, display unconditional acceptance, treat patients in a positive regard, promote health through knowledge and intervention, using evidence-based practice, and spending uninterrupted time with patients. And you'll see in our model that's really the um, theme of the patient care model that we took is the caring moments. The theory focuses on 10 character factors, so 10 processes that we can use as a healthcare team to really help define this. So we'll just go over those quickly. Um, the first one is to embrace altruistic values and practice loving kindness with self and others, to instill faith and hope and honor others, um, be sensitive to self and others by nurturing their individual beliefs and practices. 
This also will help us develop trust and caring relationships with the patients and the families and each other. Promote and accept positive and negative feelings as to authentically listen to another's story, really being present in the moment. Use creative scientific problem solving methods for caring decision making. Share teaching and learning that addresses individual needs and comprehension styles. Create a healing environment for the physical and spiritual self, which respects all human dignity. Assist with the basic care and remain open and allow miracles to enter. So based on this theory, if you really like take those 10 care to factors, how can we as a healthcare team change? We can treat patients as whole beings, be sensitive to ourself and to others, um, base our practice on the evidence that we find in our policies, provide patient teaching that's individualized to the families, create the healing environment, being authentically present, and providing unconditional acceptance. So now we're going to get into the patient care model. So first, what is a patient care model? It's a visual model based off a nursing theorist, but again, like I mentioned earlier, this nursing theorist can be applied throughout the whole healthcare team. Um, it gives us a structure for Kaleida Health's philosophy of nursing. And for those of you who don't know exactly what that means, um, it's nursing is committed to excellence by creating a culture of lifelong learning that integrates evidence-based practice, research, professional development. And a quote from the philosophy of nursing on the website is that we believe that each person is a blend of bo body, mind, and spirit, and each person deserves respect, dignity, and entitled to self-determination. So really, um, Gene Watson's theory really speaks directly to our philosophy of nursing here at Kaleida. It also is a guide to help us achieve the mission, vision, and values of the corporation. And the four values are accountability, patient-centered, integrity, and excellence. So this is the model, and I don't know, it's probably easier to see on this screen than in your PowerPoint, but the main focus here is that we keep the patient and the family in the center triangle, and the three big triangles on the outside, the healthcare team, the environment, and the health, are the main aspects that are going to affect a patient and a family, not only while they're here, but while they're in home and in the community and the clinic. The healthcare team... Um, our site practice council decided not to list everyone out, but it includes everyone from vendors to ancillary staff to nurses to doctors, dietitians, social workers, everyone. Um, and then health, remembering that we have to take care of ourselves also spiritually, physically, and emotionally. So the theory, as you'll see on the next page, really focuses on concentric circles, which is why there are circles starting in the middle and then branching out. Um, the three key words from this theory are authentic, present, and intentional, and that's how we as a healthcare team should act towards our patients and families at all times, trying to give them uninterrupted care, but being mindful that we do have other patients at the same time. Um, the next circle is the nursing process, but can really be focused towards any kind of decision making. So it's assessment, diagnosis, plan, implementation, and then you evaluate what you've done. And you continue to do that, which is why the arrows continue to go in a circle. Because <laughs> every action that you make, you need to go through this process and make sure you're really keeping the patient and the family at the center. The outside dotted circle is just to remind everyone that we do need to do this um, in a moment of caring. It's the little keyword from the theory. And that's just to keep us, again, present, authentic, and acting with intent at all times towards our patients. Um, I know this is a lot of wording to look at here, but these are the 10 carative factors that we went over in the theory broken down into the nursing process. So under assessment and diagnosis, how can we actually use this theory to work with our patient care model? So you're going to create that caring moment. You're going to assist with their basic, um, basic needs. Using your evidence-based practice, you're going to assess and diagnose. Allow the patient to tell their story. Just try to give them some uninterrupted time there. Um, this is where you're going to use your caring decision-making, and you're going to create a safe healing environment for them that's going to obviously give them as much dignity as possible because everyone's a little vulnerable when they're in the hospital. The next step is the plan. So you're going to use what you found in your assessment and diagnosis and really give them an individualized approach for their um, plan of care here at the hospital. And then you're going to implement it. So this is where you're going to use the care to factors that talk about embracing the altruistic values, practicing loving kindness with self and others. This is where you can use your aid at teaching that we've all had. Um, be sensitive to yourself and to others. Um, 
It's really important that we take care of each other so that we can effectively take care of our patients and their families and be open to mystery and allow miracles to happen. And then in the evaluation stage, you're pretty much just going to reassess everything that you've done and make sure that it's following through that moment of caring and you're really allowing the patients to express their feelings to you and giving them as much attention as possible. So a little quote that we took from the theory is at the bottom there. It's transpersonal caring acknowledges unity of life and connections that move in concentric circles of caring from individuals to others to community to the world. We're just going to talk a little bit about what the healthcare model is going to do, and then we'll go through some of the questions. Um, it's going to allow our healthcare team to provide that holistic, centered care around the patient and the family, not replacing family centered care, but just working with it. Creating a therapeutic relationship, addressing the nursing process, which is going to cover all aspects of the patient, body, mind, and spirit, going back into our philosophy of nursing here and be present in every interaction with patients, which will increase our quality of care and overall our satisfaction levels. So going into the questions a little bit, um, why does children's need a patient care model? Well, ultimately it's gonna increase our patient satisfaction and therefore increase our quality of care. It's gonna help standardize patient care among the whole healthcare team, so we all have something to speak towards. It helps promote shared governance, and for those of you who don't are too familiar with what that is. It's non-leadership employees working with leadership members to share in the decision-making process. So the site practice councils and the unit practice councils are examples of some shared governance models. Um, it's actually something that many hospitals around the country have done anywhere from 15, 10 to 15 years ago. And you'll see some examples of people who've used our model um, in other hospitals. And it's necessary for the long-term goal of magnet designation. So other hospitals using this theory, I just have four hospitals here. There are many more. I just picked out a few that the model looked essentially like ours um, and I actually found these after we had already created ours. So it's interesting to see that almost all of the models exactly look the same. Um, this one's from Florida. And again, they just keep the patient and the family in the center of the care and they broke out those care factors around where we use circles, they just used a heart. Um, the next one is in Danville, PA, and they again use the concentric circles. And on the outside, they use their values, their values, so that could be a suggestion if somebody thought that that was a good idea for us, we could alter that. Um, and they also use the nursing process there. St. Patrick Hospital in Montana, um, it is affiliated with a religion, that's why they have a cross there. But I just really wanted to point out that, again, mind, body, and spirit, patient, and family are the center of all care that happens. <laughs> and the last one is in Illinois. And again, they focus on their mission, vision, and principles, not really stating them out. But the purpose is that, again, the patient and the family are in the center. Okay, so for those of you who are not nurses, this still will apply to you because um, it's going to focus on everyone in our healthcare team, all Kaleida employees, because we all have an impact on how the patients and families feel. Whether you're getting your coffee from Tim Hortons and the person's really nice to you, or whether you see a security guard and they walk you out to your car, anyone that you have an interaction with from the time you enter this building to the time you leave can really affect your patient satisfaction and the quality that we provide to our patients. So if we all have this model to speak to, it's going to be easier for everyone to have the same kind of goal and vision. And especially if it's posted, it'll just be one easier point for patients to visually see it instead of going to the website and reading the five paragraphs on the philosophy of nursing. Um, and again, all employees and vendors here do share the same mission, vision, and values that we all have. Um, a lot of people are expressing concern that it's gonna change their current practice. And the goal of this is not to change anything that you do, but just to make what we do better and unified. And we actually, the team members that met, we focused on what we currently do and just put it into a visual model. So not really changing anything that we do, just being able to unify it and speak to the same goal. And again, we'll just cover who went over this. Um, they're actually all in the front row here. Um, Arlene Brown is from V9. Erin Stevens is not here today, but she's from the pediatric pool pool. Mary Miller is an RN on V9, um, and then me and Debbie Ann co-chaired that. 
Okay, so if anybody has any questions, we're just going to pass this mic around. Again, since it is being taped, just kind of raise your hand and we'll give you the mic. Two questions, and I'm not I'm non-medical, but okay. one is when I just can you discuss? Uh, it was interesting you wrote allow miracles to happen. So can you just elaborate on what you mean by that? Allow miracles to happen. I guess if I guess our, I mean I feel free to jump in, team members. Um, <laughs> but our goal is to not really be a barrier to anybody's beliefs or thought process. So as a healthcare team member, we're just gonna let anybody feel what they need to feel and be supportive of them. You don't have to agree with it, you just have to be supportive of it. Okay. Really focusing on like culturally sensitive care. And, and the other pieces, I know that we follow family-centered care philosophy, so how, do the, how does this incorporate or? Well, family-centered care, essentially, their model is that they wanna be at the center of care helping dictate their child's care. And so because they're at the center of it, the whole focus is to keep them as involved as possible. And so when we present to them, obviously, any concerns or issues that they have, I mean, this still is a draft, so we're going to get their input on the model too. But the main goal here is not to take away from patient family-centered care. It's to incorporate it into our model. Okay, okay way up in the back. I was just going to also elaborate on allow miracles to happen. I think, too, it just means that we're giving people hope, not false hope. We just, that we are giving them the hope that they need it, even in the worst of conditions. So, thank you. Melinda is also one of our UPC members. Hi, I'm Rosie Ross from um, Buffalo General. I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really excited, too. I share Debbie Ann's enthusiasm. I wanted to ask real quickly, with your charter, um, can you talk about some of the elements of what's in your charter and how you developed your charter? Yeah, let me go back to that slide. This is just part of our charter, but... Um, we actually had a charter worksheet where it broke out all the specific parts, and so it was purpose, scope of work, membership guidelines, ground rules, participation. Yeah, and so what we did is we took a whole uh, monthly meeting and we broke into different groups and had whiteboards, and everybody would in their group of three or four would write down what they thought our scope of work or our purpose or the roles or the ground rules, each section. And then we would go around and read what they were and then we would all vote on what we thought was the most, um, I guess, collaborative, unified part of it. And then we kind of put it all together, worked over the wording, made a draft, went through it at the next meeting to make sure everybody was on the same page, and then kind of put it right into practice. Um, it, we thought it was going to take a very long time, but it really took like an hour and a half, maybe. Um, okay, what, let's see. Charter, how we made it. What, what, what other part of your I, That was a long question. I'm sorry. No, just <laughs> no. you answered my question. I just wanted to know some of the elements of it and, and how you went about creating it. It sounds like you did it in like a multidiscipline group yes. that, that discovered the charter for the team. Yeah, and actually this year... We actually have respiratory therapists on every unit practice council um, because they're not they're on all the floors. There's not designated respiratory therapists for the floors in the ER and the ICU. So they all kind of came on ours to because they're a person that works directly with us and then we would like to expand it out to many other people if we can get them involved. But it's a slow <laughs> process. Up in the front. Yeah. No other questions? Oh, here. Okay. We're getting it. <laughs> Pass the mic. 
did you use other theorists besides Jane Watson? Because I noticed a little of Dorothea uh, Oram with the self-care. Um, so what we did is in our February meeting, actually before that, in January and December, we assigned a different nursing theorist to every unit practice council. And then in February, it was presented to the site UPC and the leadership UPC. And then together, that whole team, which was about the size of this group here, voted and kind of worked through which theorist we thought would represent Kaleida Well Children's the best. And we came up with Jean Watson. Okay. But Dorothea Orm, Orm was one of them. Right. Yeah, she yeah, was she in was. the running. <laughs> and, and Virginia Henderson was in the running. Yeah. We actually had the top three. And of the top three, Jean Watson was the one that we came to consensus on. <laughs> Throw the mic up to Satya. Uh, how do you deal with uh, parents who express a miracle oh. and, and still be realistic? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> Did everybody hear Satya's question? Yeah. His question was, how do you deal with parents who expect a miracle and it doesn't happen? Now, if I had the answer to that, Satya, I would be able to retire. But I think, you know, I think we all know that what we have to put before our families is compassion and caring and loving them where they are at. Um, we know that there are going to be bad outcomes to certain situations, and we have to try to prepare our families for that as much as we can. Sometimes we know that there's a, a course that looks like everything's going to be great, and then disaster strikes. I know I cared for a, um, a baby of a mom who had gone through nine pregnancies before she finally had this baby, and the baby was doing great. We moved the baby to the growing preemie unit, and in the middle of the night, the baby threw a pulmonary embolism and died. And how do you prepare for that? I mean, I wasn't prepared for that phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning when I came in to be with that family because I had been that family's primary nurse for almost six months. Um, none of us are prepared for that. I think what this model does is to help us keep focus. And one of the things I told the site practice council is that when we're having a really crummy day, it would be nice to look up and see this model and go, Oh, yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> we're here to put the patients and the families in the center of this and to have every interaction that we have with them be intentional and be authentic and be as caring as we possibly can be, even when the situation is the worst that it could possibly be. Did I answer your question, Satya? I don't need a mic. I, I was just, I'm a parent and I'm also part of the family council, and I, I liked, I know I asked about the miracle but I liked your answer And I think that's a really good point. I mean, sometimes I think um, we can allow, as caregivers, our own history and our own stuff to get in the way. And um, one of the things, I actually had a conversation. Elisa, I hope you don't mind me sharing this. But Elisa and I had a conversation. She's reading a book right now that I think is kind of an awesome book about habits and the habits that we form. And how now, because we're so tied to our computer systems, that when we go in to interact with a patient, you know, we bring the wow in, and we immediately put that wow between us and the patient. And so I hope that with this model, we can start to redirect that and maybe put the wow to the side and have our interaction be with the patient. And the wow is just another tool that we use, just like we would use a stethoscope or a monitor, um, but that we can remember to put the patient and the family in the center of what we're doing. So to, again, come into that moment of caring with intention and authenticity. Um, oh, can I, <laughs> I'm Lisa. I'm from the Nurse Advisory Council, which is a Kaleida wide council. And I think we're all very excited about your model and hope to use it Kaleida wide if you feel okay about that. <laughs> we don't mind sharing. We put a lot of work into it. And if other people want to use it, um, you know, I think it's great because I think we can build from it. Again, this is a foundational piece of work. Um, I guess the other big question, which I don't know if there's any been in discussion yet, on um, it's a wonderful model in theory, but how do you and put it into practice? So, you know, you're getting it out there, but then also holding accountable to follow that. Has there been any discussion or thought on it's, that? It's, it's a great question, and again, this is the first part of our work. Um, one of the things that the Site Practice Council wants to work on beginning in May is, is throughput, you know, thinking about how we move our patients through our organization. And so as we start to look at throughput and the things that, we need to put together in order to make sure we're addressing everything. We need to go, come back to this model and go, does it fit into this model? So now we have something to work from or to work toward. And that way, you know, when we're putting things together, whether it's a policy, whether it's a process, we can go, does it fit into our model? Are we still 
intentional in what we're doing. So again, it should be our foundation for what we do. Steve, I thought, did you have your hand up? I just wanted to go back to miracles for a minute. <laughs> All right, well, this is quick. This is quick. I think we, we need to look at mirror. Did I steal <laughs> I did. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Pat. So my miracle was that I just <laughs> Is that miracles, um, you know, I think people think of miracles more as a spiritual type of cure or something like that. But I think what we're talking about in our model is just those small things that happen that, really are miracles and it might be that the, the patient ended up dying but something happened in the process of it that we yeah didn't expect is, is kind of what it is okay that was totally <laughs> um, it's sort of a follow-up to, to Lisa's question um, in terms of hardwiring and moving forward what are your plans on sort of engaging and rolling this out and, and pulling the physicians into this model great question did everybody hear the question um, I'm actually doing a presentation tonight to the physician group, so I have an opportunity to talk, you know, directly with the physicians tonight. Um, as we go about our work, you know, hopefully we will keep this model in front of us. And, um, you know, Steve and I are actually working on throughput issues. And, you know, as we do the rounding model, as we start to put that work together, we should have this in front of us to say, does this fit with what we're trying to do? So I think we can incorporate it in everything we do and just use it to be kind of our, our test gauge, if you will, um, does this make sense or does it not make sense? Is it going against everything that we think we should be doing for our patients? Good question. Great idea. Are you volunteering to do the presentation? <laughs> Speak into the microphone now. Okay. I was going to answer part of Dr. Turkish's question. Our, our, the Red Triangle up there is the healthcare team, so that's part of our focus is to involve the whole team in the model from physicians to you know housekeeping, dietary, and all of us. So if we you know when we roll it out, make sure we focus on, on that part, then make sure everyone knows that this involves everyone, not just nursing. Exactly. We would love to have physicians come to the site practice council. I mean that'd be a great place to have input there too. And um, and to talk about how we come together as a team to move forward. Just a comment. Um, I think a lot of us do a lot of this um, most of the time. Um, I think the big hindrance to this for a lot of people is the time True. that you have with the patient or the family. And, and I, I don't know if that goes to staffing or, um, or what, but that's just a comment I have. And, and I think that's a great comment because I think we all feel the pressure of time or lack of time. Um, as, we, as we move forward and we really improve our processes, that should give us time back. As we nail things down, um, for instance, if we really implement nursing model tactics such as hourly rounding and bedside shift report and the patient rounding that the managers are now starting to do, as we implement those tactics, we will start to see that we will actually get time back. Um, in, my, in my previous life, when we implemented hourly rounding, we saw our call light usage go down anywhere from 48 to 52 percent, depending on the unit. When you think about how often you get interrupted to go answer call lights, um, it's really hard to be intentional when you're getting called out of the room to go do something or when you're trying to draw up meds at the PIXIS station and you're getting you know, interrupted. Um, when you can decrease that call light usage by 48 to 52 percent, you get time back. Um, in regards to your staffing question, um, we have worked really, really hard to improve our staffing here at Children's. We've hired um, 30 new nurses in, in the last three months, and uh, we're continuing to do that. We've got a staffing plan in place that we're working uh, very diligently, and we've tried to smooth out all the speed bumps as far as posting positions and getting um, you know, sign-off and, and authorization. So I think we've really smoothed that out, and I think we're moving into a, a point where we're in really good shape. And of course, just as we do that, our census started to drop. So so now we're sending nurses home. I'm like, okay, I can't win. But, I mean, you know, truthfully, we, we knew that staffing was an issue. We knew we were kind of behind the eight ball in the fall, and we've tried to put things in place to, to get us to a good place. Thanks. Barbara? Just kind of to go to Amanda's I know that people have asked, well, we do this already. What's the point? And I guess the point is that we can now direct people to this to show them that this, to show them that this is what we do. Um, 
And because that was a big question we got from a lot of people is, why do we do this already? Why do we need right. it? Right, and I, and I think that's a good point, and coming from an educator, <laughs> it's a very good point. Because now in orientation, they'll be able to show this model and say, you know, this is what we believe. It's, it's really a pictorial depiction of what we all want to do and what we're already doing. Um, I have, I've had folks say to me, well, gosh, Debbie, we learned this in nursing school. Yeah, we did, so let's use it. You know, and I think that's, that's really important. It's, it's important to be able to show people. You know, a lot of us are visual learners, and we get concepts because of pictures, not because of words. And so to have the words, as Lauren you know, read to you, what our philosophy of nursing is, is great. But some people will read that and go, yeah, so. Other people will look at the picture and go, got it. You know, I, I really, I've got it. And patients seeing this, you know, to have this displayed around, this will really say to the patients, they really do care about me. They're really putting me and my child or me and my baby in the center of what they're doing. So thanks. Right, and, and I totally agree with that, and that's one of the things that Steve and I are working on with looking at our rounding process and how we round on the patients, how we communicate that to the patients, how we actually um, decide on our plan of care, and, and how we communicate with one another before we even get uh, to the walking rounds. So be looking for that because we're working on it diligently now, and I'll be bringing that to the Site Practice Council in May so that they can take a look at it and, and help us in developing a, a much better model for, for rounding. Yeah, and we've heard that. We've heard that, you know, communication is not good between anybody, nurse to nurse, physician to physician, physician to nurse. We, we know that, so that's something we are working on. Any other questions? Suggestions? Well, can we thank Lauren for doing a great presentation? Thank you.